welcome to Zoo School. I'm Rebecca and we have some really great guests for you to meet today. But before I pass the camera over for us to get started, I would like to share some really great artwork that we got in from our program last week. Uh, so you'll see Chelsea, age four, sent us this really great picture of Bree the skunk. And Chelsea, I love this picture so much. I love how you even gave her a fun little mohawk. That just cracks me up. I love this artwork. So anytime you guys would love to send us some artwork, uh, we love to get it. You can just send it uh, to education at Elma Park Zoo. And we love seeing it and we love being able to share it um, on Zoo School Live for everyone to see. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to pass you off to the wonderful Phil, one of our keepers here at the zoo. And he's going to talk to you all about our guests today. Good morning everyone, my name is Phil as Rebecca said, and today we will be shining the spotlight on a couple of our stars of our barn, which is Pickles and Jenny. So they are both miniature donkeys, and in order to be classified as a miniature donkey versus a regular donkey, they can be no taller than 36 inches at the point of their withers. So the withers is the center point between their shoulders right here. So right here, they can't be any more than 36 inches in order to be classified as miniature. Um, just to compare, uh, the an average standard mule or a standard donkey actually can be around on average between 36 and 48 inches tall at the wither. So they have about another foot on these guys. Another comparison is that the miniature donkeys usually weigh between 200 and 400 pounds whereas the standard donkeys actually usually weigh between 400 and 500 pounds. So these guys are uh, originally from, they were, sorry, they were uh, domesticated about 6,000 years ago, um, but they were first imported from Sicily and also another uh, over in the Mediterranean area. So these guys uh, are no longer present there um, due to domestication and all that. They, their numbers are very limited there. But in the United States today, there's between 10 and 20,000 of these guys living on farms and ranches and in zoos like ours. So um, today we have Pickles. Um, he has our male. And we have Jenny over there. She is our female. Um, Pickles is about 200, and, or I'm sorry, Pickles is about 340 pounds and Jenny is about 290 pounds give or take um, Pickles is 22 years old and Jenny is about 20 years old so the average life expectancy um, for a miniature donkey is about 33 years and um, obviously these guys are getting getting up there in age but they're doing fantastic um, and so in that time uh, their gestation period is usually about 12 months. So shout out to mothers out there, you know, that's another three months on average more than the human gives birth. So you can be thankful that you guys are not miniature donkeys. Um, so these guys, Pickles is what, like I said, he's a male. So he's what's known as a Jack. And Jenny is known as a Jenny, which is also a term for a female donkey. And a baby, just like it is in horse, or just as it is in horses, is called a foal. So also at birth, these guys usually weigh between 18 and 25 pounds. <clears throat> so these guys, as you can tell, um, are hoof stock. They have what's called a monogastric digestive system. So that is similar to your digestive system. Um, it's very different from that of, say, a ruminant animal, a ruminant animal such as our bison or our giraffe that we have here. And these guys are actually similar, more similar to you in their ability to digest things. So these guys have a, some awesome adaptations that they have um, developed over time. So we'll kind of start at the top and name a few off. So you can see those wonderfully large ears. Um, it is estimated that they can hear uh, I've heard some reports of even up to 60 miles away, um, but they can hear many miles away with those ears and they are very alert and very astute to their surroundings with them. They work independently of each other so they can turn them in different directions so they can kind of have an ear going in however they need to go. Um, 
And also, it is believed by some people that their ears work similar to that of a jackrabbit and pulling them down. So they act as big kind of um, radiant panels. The, the warm blood travels to their ears and then is cooled off because it's separated, spread out so much. And then as it travels back into their body, it's a lot cooler. So they are able to maintain their temperature a little bit better than we are. So next we go down and we can see that um, like many uh, prey animals, which these guys are preyed upon by usually wolves, um, bears, feral hogs, mountain lions, birds of, and large birds of prey. Ooh. Um, see, they just heard something over there, and so they got a little excited. You notice that they kind of perked up a little bit. Those ears are pointing towards what is causing that noise. Um, but these guys are very alert to their surroundings. Um, but these guys have eyes kind of on the sides of their head. So what that does is that gives them almost, it's real close, it's not quite 360 degree vision all around them. Um, so all, in order to see just behind them, they just have to turn their heads slightly to the left or to the right. And that allows them to be able to see all around them. They have decent eyesight. And uh, they kind of act as a, a warning to other animals that's in the area because of those, those ears and those eyes. Now, next we're going to focus on a really cool trait that I think um, they have is their ability to bray. So if you've ever heard them kind of key haul before, um, we are able to hear it from up to three miles away. It's believed that they can hear it significantly further than that. But their ability, that's one of their ways that they communicate. So they use that to be able to say hello or hey, I found food or oh my gosh, there's danger. And so often these guys are housed with other animals such as goats and sheep and cattle because these guys will act as kind of your first responders to those predators if they happen to get into this area. So. Another thing about these guys is these guys are not timid. They are not like a lot of your sheep um, or other prey animals that will run away whenever something startles them. These guys will actually stand their ground to an extent. Um, so they work hard at protecting the herd. <clears throat> do you have any fun stories about Daniel and Dickles? So, yeah, I do. Well, another cool fact about these guys is that their donkeys tend to be what's called sure-footed, which means they do not trip and stumble as easy as, say, some other animals do. So that's why these guys make excellent pack animals. Um, but it's also given them, and that along with the ability that they don't stand away from a fight, gives them the, uh, what do I want to say, the bad name of being very stubborn. Um, and that, but it's how they develop to survive. Well, whenever we are cleaning these guys, if you don't want to, if they don't want to move, they're not going to move. So as we are raking up piles of hay, these guys tend to stand right in the middle of the hay. And then you move on to another pile of hay and they go and follow you to that pile of hay and they won't let you pick it up because they don't want to. Um, they always love being the center of attention. Um, they will constantly bray for our attention. And in fact, we often call them liars a little bit whenever it comes to um, whether or not they've been fed. Because if you ask them, they have never been fed in their life and they always want food. But it, they also have probably just been fed five minutes ago. So these guys eat a diet of grain and grasses and hay. As you can see, they're loving this clover and this fresh green grass that we have out here. Um, they get a, two different kinds of hay throughout the day. And they also get a little bit of grain. Um, so these guys have developed over time to be able to live in like scrublands and areas that have very little nutritional value. So what that means is that these guys are able to maintain themselves on very small rations of food. Um, so we have to really watch their weight because if they get too much of the good stuff then they gain a lot of weight um, and that's not healthy for anybody. <clears throat> so, but these guys are actually another cool feature that they have is that with that digestive system, they can lose up to 30% of the water in their body and not be excessively dehydrated. Um, and they can still keep on going and they will actually can retain, or they can regain that amount of water by drinking in less than five minutes. So yeah, some really awesome animals here. Um, very stubborn whenever they want to be, but. Um, so we're going to take some questions. This is from Luke and Gray, and it's do they bite? And yes, so any animal that has a mouth can bite, um, and they 
their bite really hurts. So these guys all have top and bottom teeth. So as you can see, they use their teeth to bite down on the grass, which is significantly different than say some of your animals such as cattle or our bison that we have here because they don't have top teeth. And so what they do is they end up wrapping their tongue around things and then they kind of pull the grass out that way. But these guys actually bite down. So, and it hurts quite a bit. Okay. Uh, Ayla, um, are they siblings? No, they are not siblings. Um, what is their favorite snack? Well, these guys' favorite snacks happen to be carrots and bananas. Um, uh, and Savannah asked, do they sleep standing up? Um, yes, they can sleep standing up. Um, I have seen them do that. And I have also seen them lay down occasionally, though. So maybe that's okay. um, Kathy. Are there plants that are poisonous to them? Yes, ragweed um, and bracken are examples of plants that are poisonous to donkeys. Um, Tierra asks, is it true that you can ride them or is that a myth? Well, these guys are awfully small. So um, these guys are not suitable to be ridden, although it is, they are commonly used as pack animals because they are so sure-footed. So these guys um, cannot haul very much weight uh, and most likely or they can't haul people but they can haul items so there's many people that are asking how fast can they run and these guys can run about 40 miles an hour um, these guys are relatively old I'm not sure I've never seen them get up to that speed but I'm sure if there was enough grain out there they would do it but they do like anything that food comes in. So one of their favorite things is hay bags. Um, we end up putting their food in a hay bag. So, where, oh, Graham asked, where are they native to? They were first domesticated in Italy. And Katie, how many spots does pickles have? Um, that is a great question. Let's see, I count two over here, three. Six. Total or six over there? Probably about six over probably, here. Probably, so about nine to ten spots, something like that. Some of them aren't necessarily spots and long streaks. But Megan asked, has Jenny had any babies? Um, that I do not know. I do not believe that she ever has. Um, but I cannot say for sure. Sandy asked, are donkeys and mules the same thing? No, donkeys and mules are not the same thing. So donkeys are their own separate species, and a mule is actually a crossbred between a male donkey and a female horse. And so what that does is it gives you the size of the horse and the sure-footedness of the donkey, and so that's referred to as a mule. Now, if you use a female donkey and a male horse, then you get what's called a cane. Zachary asked, how old are Pickles and Jenny? So Pickles here is 22 years old, and Jenny is 20 years old. And how hard can they kick? Um, they can kick incredibly hard. Um, I do not have a measure of it, but it really, really hurts. If you ever got kicked by one, um, you would definitely have some bruises, maybe a broken limb or two. these guys really they really like to tell us that they're hungry constantly um, and they love being brushed so what we're gonna do is we're we are gonna do some little bit of brushing with them um, and enjoy the, the view of our lovely donkeys and don't forget to send in any more questions if you guys have them um, while we uh, just stay out here and enjoy the sunset sunshine Asa asks do they trip when they dance well, not really. Um, I haven't actually caught them dancing too much, 
But these guys, like I said before, are what's known as sure-footed. So they don't tend to trip very often at all. And so I can imagine that if these guys danced, they would be incredibly graceful dancers. So both of these guys came to the zoo in 2003 as a little um, side note about them. So they've been here about seven years. And Kathleen, or Kathleen asked, what is their favorite place to be scratched? They really enjoy their backs to be scratched um, and their necks. Um, they do not like things touching their legs without them knowing it. So we do pick their hooves um, every day. And we have to be really careful because we don't want them to kick us. So um, they're used to flies and stuff landing on their legs. So how they, they kick them to kind of get them to go off them. So we have to actually cut. We start at the top and we work our way down to touch their legs because we don't want them to kick up. Um, but they really like scratches on their neck, scratches between their ears um, and their backs. So, all right. We also have some lettuce here for them, which is another one of their favorite treats. Um, that we can give them. So I did mention that we pick their hooves every single day, um, and that is because their hooves have little hollow pockets underneath of them that collect manure and hay and things like that. And if we don't pick those hooves, they could get infected. Um, so every day we clean them out, and it would be similar to if you were walking around with a rock in your shoe all day long. And so every day we pick their hooves so that they're nice and clean and we have what's called a farrier who is kind of like a manicurist or a pedicurist for donkeys and goats and sheep that takes care of their hooves. So he comes out frequently. Do they enjoy, uh, Lauren asks, do they enjoy being brushed? Yes, they really, really enjoy being brushed. They would probably stand here all day and let us brush them um, as long as there was some food around um, I think the only thing they really enjoy more is food rather than being brushed. Okay, so there's many people that are asking, are there different types of donkeys? And there's actually three main types. There's wild donkeys, there's feral donkeys, and there's domesticated donkeys. So these guys would be classified in that domesticated donkey um, in the category of miniature. Lizzie asks, do they get along with other animals? Um, commonly, donkeys do. Um, they, like I said, they act as protectors of herds. So if they're bonded with other animals, they do great with them. Um, but they can also be pretty stubborn, um, like I said. So if they don't get along with an animal, they really don't get along with that animal and they could potentially hurt them. Um, so these guys live with each other. They do fine with each other, but anytime that we uh, move them around. Um, we always want to be make, we want to be careful um, and watch to make sure that they're not going to be they're not going to be aggressive towards the other animals. Um, but these guys are pretty calm and they they do great with people um, and other animals. So. Carla, do they have prehensile hor lips like horses? Um, yes, they do to an extent. Um, they do have prehensile lips, and that's. They're able to use them to kind of maneuver the grass around and pull it into their mouth and um, eat it up. So. Okay, so Jenny is our female and she is the gray one with the black or the dark brown uh, cross on her back. And then Pickles is the white and gray ones 
and Pickles is 22 years old and Jenny is 20 years old. They are really loving it out here in the yard today. All right, well thank you guys for tuning in today and I hope to see you guys back here again at the Zoo School Live here at the Elmwood Park Zoo and a special thanks to Rebecca here for helping me hold Jenny there. Bye guys! Bye.